Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us. To lead us off, I'd like to introduce our Transportation Secretary, somebody who's done an exemplary job and has been pushing hard for a long-term, robust transportation bill that this country deserves. Secretary Fox. Thank you, Senator Schumer. And let me just say at the outset that America is in the midst of a transportation crisis. Uh, we have had a successive uh, series of years of short-term measures that have worked a terrible, terrible amount of damage on our transportation system. We have, for instance, uh, $2 billion of projects that we know about right now in states across the country that have been pulled off the table because of federal funding uncertainty. We know that when the federal government injects long-term growing investments in infrastructure, that we see states and local governments begin to plan, to design, to construct, and to build the kind of transportation we need around the country. Uh, the American people know that their transportation system is getting worse. They know the potholes are getting deeper, the congestion is getting longer, the traffic is getting thicker, and we need to deal with this issue. We've got a deadline. July 31st is the end of this latest extension. And uh, again, I will continue to impress upon the American people and to this Congress that we need to get a long-term bill done. Uh, this country is too great. Uh, the gifts we've been given in our infrastructure system are too substantial for us to waste away and to allow it to deteriorate and to create conditions in which the American people and their quality of life is threatened. We have introduced a bill, the Grow America Act, that puts a lot of money into our transportation system, $478 billion over six years. I'm pleased to see that the EPW committee, through the great leadership of uh, Senator Boxer, has moved a bill out of committee that also includes growth and a number of provisions that show the, uh, the thinking uh, is similar between the administration and Congress. But we've still got a lot to do. There are a lot of innings left in this, and we need to get a long-term bill done, and I stand ready to help this Congress do it. Thank you. Well, thank you, Secretary Fox, and thank you for all your good work. I want to thank every one of my colleagues here each of whom has been a leader on this issue, each of whom is ranking member of a committee or subcommittee intimately involved with transportation. Now, yesterday, Leader McConnell said that after we finish the education bill, there's a good chance we'll turn to consider a transportation bill next. Those of us here have just one question. What transportation bill are we considering next? Senate Democrats for weeks and weeks have called on Republicans to make progress on a long-term, robust bill that actually meets our transportation needs. We don't want a short-term bill. We don't want a bill that doesn't meet the needs of this country by flat funding or decreasing funding. We need a robust bill, and we like the President's plan, uh, which is just that, six years and a 45 percent increase. But unfortunately, Republicans have been dragging their feet while our roads and bridges continue to crumble, and they haven't put any proposal on the table, despite the fact that for weeks and weeks and weeks we've been asking. Ranking Member Boxer did a great job in the EPW committee moving a bill forward that increases funding over the long term. It's not as much as we'd like, but at least it's an increase. But Republicans know that that committee bill is just one piece of the puzzle. So today, We are, sending the, uh, lead we are sending a letter to Leader McConnell and the Republican leadership asking a very simple question. What is your plan? Senate Democrats believe we can pay for a long-term robust bill with international tax reforms that bring profits back, that bring, pro that bring back profits that are now stashed overseas. This morning, Paul Ryan said that that was option A for a transportation bill. We couldn't agree more. There's be beginning to be some bipartisan coalescing around a robust, long-term plan that can actually be paid for. International tax reform is, seems right now to be the only clear bipartisan path towards getting the revenue we need for a long-term bill that actually fixes our aging and broken infrastructure. 
Now we hear that some Republicans may want to rob Peter to pay Paul and cut other middle class programs to pay for transportation programs. That is a backward idea that Democrats will not support. So what is the Republican plan? What will we be debating on the floor next week? That's what we want to know. Senator Boxer. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is the long and short of the transportation uh, issue right here in front of you. And I really want to take a moment to thank Secretary Fox for his consistency, his clarity on why this issue is so important, and for putting out a bill that really guides us to what we should be doing. And I want to thank my buddy, my friend, my brother, Senator Schumer, who I know for so long, who has led us as a caucus uh, into a place where we all feel comfortable, a long-term, robust transportation bill that will create millions of jobs, help thousands of businesses, and will meet our needs. And that's where we want to go, and the pay for, international tax reform. You know, I've supported 10 different ways to fund uh, this, but as a caucus, we've come together and it is good news, Senator, that Paul Ryan says that he thinks this is good. Now, I also want to share some news that I did have a chance, a meeting with Speaker Boehner. Uh, we met in the halls, and he called me over, and he said, Barbara, because I know him for many, many years, I really want a long-term bill. That was music to my ears, and I reported it to everyone. Because if we have that kind of push over in the House, uh, and we now see some progress with Paul Ryan on a pay for. Let's get it done. And that leads me to where we are today. We are 22 days away from a shutdown, a transportation shutdown. And we don't have the plan, the Senate plan. And we're asking for that long term plan. The clock is ticking. As uh, Secretary Fox said, we've seen extension after extension. By the way, those are damaging to this economy. I would ask you rhetorically, if you wanted to buy a house and you went to the bank and the banker said, great news, we've got great credit, but we can only give you a six-month mortgage, would you buy the house? Of course not. Will our states build their projects? No. So we need to deal with reality. A short-term fix is no fix at all. And with Senator Schumer's uh, leadership, we're making that point. We are eager to work with Republicans. And I'm here to report to you that Senator Inhofe and I, who are, <laughs> don't see eye to eye on anything else, but see very much eye to eye on, a, on infrastructure, have come up with this Drive Act. And as it's true, it's not as robust as the administration's, but it's a heck of a start. And it, is, it, has, a, it has some reforms that are good, and it, it has a freight title, and it has the continuation of a TIFIA program. It has a new uh, title for projects of major significance that are so important to our uh, states. So it is time to bring that bill to the Senate floor with pay force. This isn't rocket science. So I'll close with this. Uh, Senator McConnell, if we can do it in the Environment and Public Works Committee, if Speaker Boehner says he wants a long-term bill, uh, and, and we are so ready uh, to work with you on such, uh, on such an effort, and it means everything. We still have unemployed construction workers and businesses that are struggling in construction from the Great Recession. And if we do nothing, it's a sure, it's a sure thing that we could relapse, and this recovery could slow down and reverse. So this is urgent, and I'm proud to stand here with my colleagues today. Every one of us has crumbling bridges and roads. We all signed a letter to Senator McConnell saying we wanted to work on this. And the American people are tired of this Republican kabuki dance of trying to get that result. 
By the way, can you imagine Senator McConnell doing a kabuki dance? <laughs> and yet it's happening. So uh, we are here to say that it's time to stop this nonsense and let's just get the roads repaired and built. Uh, I want to join in thanking Senator Schumer for his leadership, but uh, equally so to Secretary Fox and to President Obama, who have really provided a plan. And this letter is a call to action. It is a call not just for a plan, but for action. That's what America needs now, action. Not only do we all have crumbling roads and bridges, but the crumbling bridges and rails in the Northeast are a chokehold on economic progress for the rest of the country. There are four bridges in Connecticut carrying the busiest rail artery in the country that date from the turn of the century. Not this century, the last century. One of them was built when Grover Cleveland was president. That bridge and all the others that carry Amtrak and Metro North and the rails that unite the East Coast have to be rebuilt or our economy will suffer. It's $100 million a day that's lost when that railroad is shut down, as happens when those bridges fail to work, when the rails have to be closed because they are crumbling and decaying. So the economic impact is East Coast-wide and, in fact, nationwide, and certainly the entire metropolitan region in New York, which is why three senators from that area are here today. The present approach, patch and pray, is no longer viable. There has to be rebuilding, and it has to be done now with the certainty and stability that contractors and others require to commit resources. Uncertainty is an enemy and uncertainty is the inevitable result of short-term fixes that rely on patch and pray. If we simply patch and hope or pray that it will be enough, it won't work. So let me just say, finally, even if you don't care about the transportation system, even if you don't care about the economic impact, there's a four-letter word here that you should keep in mind. J-O-B-S, jobs. Ultimately, even if nobody uses the rails or roads, we're talking here about jobs. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Put America back to work, keep America working, keep our, our economy moving forward. Let's invest. It's not spend, it's not fun, it's invest in the future of our transportation system. Thank you very much. We are in a state of infrastructure desperation in our nation right now. Uh, the challenges we face are extraordinary and we see them. When I was mayor, government should take care, we learned government takes care of the basics. Fixes roads, cleans them of snow, fixes them of potholes. But our United States government can't even get the basics right. We are standing not on a firm foundation, but one that has been rated as structurally deficient. We're not standing on solid ground. We're standing on crumbling roads. You cannot build up a great nation unless you have that foundation, that solid ground. And our infrastructure is undeniably crumbling. You go to the state of New Jersey and you hear people complain fundamentally about the problems caused by infrastructure. I hear it every day that I'm home and even more so, I hear it every morning from commuters on my Facebook page and on Twitter screaming about how can one of the most important states in the nation, going over one of the busiest river crossings, 
the busiest, busiest river crossing in our country, how can they have an infrastructure that is costing them so much money? $1,951 it is costing each New Jerseyan every year extra because of our crumbling infrastructure. $1,951 from idling in traffic, damage done to cars. The loss of productivity is even greater than that. This is a self-inflicted wound that is unacceptable. And other nations are almost laughing at our inability to do governmental basics. We're investing 2.5% of our GDP into our infrastructure. China's at 9%. Europe is double that. And so we are hemorrhaging right now. Productivity, lost opportunity, wasted funds. And so at this point of infrastructure desperation, the question is, is what will the leadership of the Senate respond to? How will they help taxpayers in America stop the hemorrhaging of resources? People on New Jersey transit or or, or state roads. How will they answer? With a flat funding bill? Well, that is unacceptable. Reducing the investment, that is unacceptable. The self-inflicted wounds have to stop. Government not even getting the basics right has to stop. Not having a foundation to build a great America has to stop. Thank you, my colleagues, each for an eloquent and on-point statement ready for your questions. Ryan mentioned this morning that there's just not enough time for the next two weeks to put together this international tax reform idea. If I want to extend it through the year, then you can talk about that this fall. Would that be acceptable to you guys? Well, look, the idea of international tax reform to pay for a robust highway bill is gaining strength, but we obviously um, we don't want to do a short-term bill, and so you need to see some broad support that people would have confidence that over the next three, four months we could actually get the international tax reform bill done. We're beginning to see that support, but we would uh, want to see some more support congeal over the next few weeks. And then I think a shorter term proposal uh, would be acceptable to people. Is there any chance that Democrats would vote against a, a patch and other short term extension? Look. We want to see what the Republican plan is. That's the bottom line. We don't like a patch. We don't like a short-term extension. But we're not going to prejudge anything in a vacuum. Let's see what they have. What does a patch mean? Does it mean 12 months, 16 months, 3 months, 9 months? How do they pay for it? Does it have an increase in funding? These are all questions that you have to have see answered. Why is nobody talking about less than the tax rate? Sorry? Uh, less than a long-term bill, the ICT bill, you fund it through gas tax. Why is that not on the table? I think there, while there are some individual members who support a gas tax, the vast majority of both parties do not. Yes? Secretary Fox, can you say any more precisely about when you expect funds to run out? I know by the end of July is the deadline, but anything more about when you know, projects are going to stop? Well, let me just say very clearly, uh, projects have stopped. Uh, I said before that states uh, across the country have pulled back $2 billion of projects that we know about. Uh, that doesn't count the projects that didn't even get put in the queue because of the federal funding uncertainty over the last 33 extensions. So I think we've already seen some damage inflicted on the system. To your point, however, uh, for the highway account, we'll start to see the balance get to $4 billion, which is our crisis point, uh, somewhere at the end of July, early part of August. And we will be updating states on the status of that in the coming days. Uh, and at that point, we will begin implementing cash management procedures. Well, look, um, what I've talked about is the fact that we need to end this uh, extension palooza that we've had in transportation for so long. Uh, we've got to get over that. Uh, and I think that was clear in the SAP. 
Uh, and I think there are many ways that can, hap can happen by Congress passing a long-term bill with substantial growth. Uh, and that's what we all hope for. So we're going to have to see, uh, as the Senator said, what comes about. But uh, I don't, again, want to prejudge the outcome of anything other than to say uh, that we've been very clear. We need certainty. We need growth. We need 21st century policy. And we need to move on. Secretary Fox. Look, we have put a bill on the table. It's a $478 billion bill that's paid for through pro-growth business tax reform. And uh, in fact, the specific pay for for our bill comes through international tax reform. So uh, the fact that folks are talking about this on both sides of Congress, on both sides of the aisle, we think is productive. The question is, is there going to be uh, enough there there over the next several weeks for folks to feel confident that uh, there's a go forward. Senator Schumer? Sure. Um, even if there's consensus building for tax reform as the way to pay for this, could you give us a sense as to, within the debate about tax reform, how is that looking? Is that impossible to come to? No. It's pretty good, somewhere in the middle? You know, Senator Portman and I have worked on a uh, plan at the request of Senators Hatch and Wyden. Uh, that is growing in support and has large support in our caucus, some support in the Republican caucus, certainly the support of the chair of the Ways and Means Committee, who's an instrumental player in the House. So it's a very doable proposition. Is it there yet? No. Will there be lots of issues to work out once we embark on that, if we are able to? Yes. But it's right now it's the only alternative out there. If you want a robust, long-term plan and you need to fund it, no one has offered an alternative, certainly not our Republican colleagues. Senator Sanders, following up on that, it's certainly to your and Senator Forbes' credit that you produced a plan. Um, I think a lot of people... Should I duck? <laughs> well, there's a, there's a bunch. My shoes are on, don't worry. Um, but I think the initial reaction from especially the, the tax community and from uh, practitioners and from policy scholars has been that they were surprised by that there was more detail in the plan, especially... Well, the we're, not ready to, we're not ready to get into the detail. There's detail in, in the President's plan. There's detail in the plan that Chairman uh, Camp, former head of the Republican head of the Ways and Means Committee, put out. So there's enough detail for people to get their teeth into. It wouldn't make any sense for us to begin discussing detail till we get the broader consensus we seek. Senator, can you just respond to what Senator McConnell said yesterday? Well, we're waiting. We're, we're waiting, Senator McConnell's res re response. Uh, what is his plan? And and he doesn't have one as as best we've seen. He said he's going to move next week. That's a pretty big statement, given that he doesn't have a plan. And I don't know a single Democrat he's talked to about it. And he's going to certainly need Democratic support. When you hear the words comprehensive action, what do you hear in your mind? Is that just a smoke screen, or do you not have a plan, or what? I don't understand what you're saying. As I said, Portman and I put out some real detail about how to pay for it, or real framework is a better way to put it, on how to pay for it. There are details and plans that have come out. I think that we've made good progress. And, you know, when I read actually what Senator McConnell said, it wasn't closing the door on this. It was just expressing, I guess in his words, some skepticism that it's doable. Uh, but uh, let's see. And does he have an alternative? Thank you, everybody.